Welcome to the Claremont County Public Library's Book Lovers Podcast. I'm your host, Laura, and today I'm joined by Amy from the New Richmond branch. Hey, Ames. Hello. And today we're going to be sharing some children's books related to the Underground Railroad. Yes. Remember to visit claremontlibrary.org for links to all of the great books that Amy's going to be sharing with us today. Amy? Would yeah. you like to take it away and get us started? I think you're going to sure. talk about some picture books. Picture books and some nonfiction, primarily. So the first book I'm going to talk about is the What Was the Underground Railroad by Yana Zeldis McDonough. And it is actually part of the What Was and Who Was series that is really, really, really popular right now. So it is a basic introduction to the Underground Railroad and the fact that the Underground Railroad helped slaves escape or slaves escaped many years before the Underground Railroad really sort of started. But in about the 1830s, the Underground Railroad kind of took off and it became more unified and more coordinated. And because people began to work together to free the slaves. And then that's where we get the term Underground Railroad. And there was not an Underground Railroad, like a subway, going through cities and towns. But it was a whole network of people, abolitionists, who are the people that believe that slaves should not be slaves and that everybody should be free. And then the escaped slaves as well. And they were all working together. This book, The What Was the Underground Railroad, talks about how it all worked and how the homes were called stations and that the people, the abolitionists who were working to free the slaves were station masters or conductors or operators and that the routes were lines. So it did talk like it was a true railroad, but there wasn't actually a railroad. And that escaping slaves were cargo or passengers, so that it was basically in code, so that if they were talking and somebody overheard, nobody would be suspicious. And it talks all about the Ohio River and how important it was, which is why we're focusing on it here in Claremont County, because we have quite a few sites that were involved in the Underground Railroad. So we are talking about that today because, you know, for instance, I'm in New Richmond, which is right across the river from Kentucky. So there are quite a few abolitionists that were here working to free slaves. And the Ohio River itself was the border, obviously, between the slave states being Kentucky and further south and then the north and freedom. And there are actually a few other books in the What Was, Who Was series that are also tied to the Underground Railroad. One is Who Was Harriet Tubman? It looks like that. And then the other one is Who Was Harriet Beecher Stowe, who wrote um, Uncle Tom's Cabin? She actually lived in Cincinnati, and she also had passed through Claremont County. So they are both very involved in the Underground Railroad. And then the next book I'm going to talk about is a really cool nonfiction. It's The Underground Railroad, an Interactive History Adventure. That sounds fun. It's very cool because it's actually a choose-your-own-adventure nonfiction book. You can choose a path of being either an Underground Railroad abolitionist conductor. You can choose the path to be the runaway slave, or you could choose the path to be a slave catcher. And there's 37 choices that you get to make, and there are 16 endings. So depending on which version of the story you read, you can... Sure, different outcomes, different choices. That's exactly. really interesting. And it's really fun, too. Each page starts with a general introduction, and then it gives choices that say, you know, if you want to do this, go to this page. If you want to do this, go to this page. And it takes place in the 1850s, which is right after the passage of the Fugitive Slave Act. So even in the North, if a slave catcher catches somebody in the act of 
helping slaves escape, the slaves can be returned to the South and people can be punished up in the North, which was a challenge to say the least for the abolitionists because slave catchers were everywhere. The next one, which is also another nonfiction, is for a little bit of an older reader. And this one is Freedom Roads, Searching for the Underground Railroad. And it is the archaeology of the Underground Railroad. Oh, and that sounds fascinating. Doesn't it? And the challenge is the Underground Railroad, because everything was always hidden, is trying to find that story, trying to find that past now and looking back. Because as hard as it is to find, you know, to understand the past of all things, even things that we know and are well documented, imagine how difficult and almost impossible it must be to gather information about a time in our history when the activities of the men, women, and children who lived through it were purposely hidden. And that is the challenge of historians and archaeologists. And this book looks through laws and official documents and household records and personal journals and diaries and buildings itself to try and find those histories. And also the oral stories, which are so important. But there's no record, no physical record of it. So it's also trying to determine the truth between some of those family stories. It's like, is that really true or partially true? You know, it's like that famous fish story where it's like you caught a fish this big, but you tell somebody it's this big. It's trying to sift through all that to find the truth of the Underground Railroad. Sounds fascinating. It is. And speaking of truth and finding truth, the next one I have is Moses, which is when Harriet Tubman led her people to freedom. And Harriet Tubman is the quintessential conductor of the Underground Railroad. She saved over 300 slaves individually, personally. This book is written by Carol Boston Weatherford, who has written quite a few nonfiction history books for kids and also adults. It's illustrated by Kadir Nelson, and his illustrations are amazing. And they bring her story to life, and it's really poetic, and the illustrations give you a sense of place, and they're just gorgeous. They're gorgeous. The writing is short, but it is enough to give you a sense of who Harriet Tubman truly was. And the fact that she was, you know, they called her Moses because she led her people free. And she has a saying that she never lost a passenger on her Underground Railroad. Wow. Whereas other conductors, unfortunately, did. But she somehow managed to get through everything. And so she was instrumental in the whole thing. Another picture book biography that I have is called Box. Henry Brown mails himself to freedom. And he is was a slave who packed himself into a box that had a box made, a brown wooden box. And he purposely mailed himself to abolitionists and went on a journey in his box. At one point, his box was turned upside down. And he was, so he was on his head for a while, the blood draining to his head. And he had a horrible headache because of it. But it was eventually his box was righted and he does make it all the way to freedom. He mailed himself to freedom. Story. And I, I've never heard of it before. That's incredible. I believe he ended up in actually Otterbahn, Ohio. And he actually ended up going to London with the Fugitive Slave Act. He decided he would be more free if he could go to London right. afterwards. But yes, he, he actually built himself a box and put a little bit of food in and endured a 26-hour journey in a box. That's amazing. And, you know, people lifting him because at that time there wasn't computer sorting. So right. people were physically handling him, not knowing that there was a person inside. And now we're going to leave the world of picture books because the next one I'm going to talk about is Nathan Hale's Hazardous Tales, The Underground Abductor. And Nathan Hale has quite a few um, books in this series that are hazardous tales. It is a graphic novel, but it is nonfiction as well. Oh, that's interesting. Are there many graphic novels that are nonfiction? I always think of fiction when I think graphic novels. Right, just graphic novel with a novel word. There are a few, not anywhere near as many as fiction. But it's a story of Harriet Tubman told through graphic novels. Oh, that's super cool. It gives so much background on her and who she is 
and some of how she was able to escape. But just the whole graphic novel concept makes it so much more fun and interesting to read instead of just a dry nonfiction book. Pictures make everything better. Pictures make everything better. And on that note, I'm going to talk about my last book, which is not a picture book, even though we just said pictures make everything better. Now you have to read words and put those pictures in your mind. The last book is called River Runs Deep, and it's a juvenile fiction book. And it is about the Underground Railroad a little bit. It's more adjacent to the Underground Railroad. Okay. Because it's really about the Mammoth Cave in Kentucky, which became Mammoth Cave National Park. But in 1842 and 1843, Mammoth Cave, they used that area as a hospital for tuberculosis patients. I didn't know that. It's, a, it's juvenile fiction, but it's very historically accurate. So there is a lot of research that goes into it. Because just because it's fiction does not mean that everything in the story is fiction. There's a lot of truth in this one. The main character of the story is Elias Harrigan, or Elias Harrigan, and he is from Virginia, and he goes to Mammoth Cave in Kentucky for treatment for tuberculosis. And they believed at the time that the cave dampness would help with treating tuberculosis, and that the cave air and the darkness would actually help patients. It was found later that that was not true and the hospital did not last long it was about a year to two years max but while Elias is there he meets Jonah who is sort of hiding in the background and sort of sneaks up on him and surprises him and he can't see him very well because the cave area is dark except for where their lanterns are because there are no modern lights this is 1840s so we're we're talking darkness except for where your lantern shines And so Elias starts hearing voices or hearing a voice. And at first he thinks it might be a ghost or he's hearing things or the cave is getting to him. But he discovers that it's Jonah who is the runaway slave. And he's living in a free community in the cave that is further down into the cave. And so they're sort of living literally underground and it's a community of runaway slaves. And there are... A few slaves still, because this is Kentucky, which was a slave state, and the hospital owner and the hotel owner of the Mammoth Cave area use slaves to lead the tours. They would lead tour groups, and they know the cave area very well. They also explore it on their own, plus some of them are actually living in the caves. Elias makes friends with the tour leaders, also Jonah. And he learns how to navigate through the cave as well. And there's also adventure because some of the patients are not comfortable having slaves. And they're worried that there is another community of slaves and they try to find it. And Elias has to do everything he can to protect what he's found. And that is just a few of the books of the Underground Railroad that the Claremont County Public Library has. And as you can see, we have a lot more that we would love to help you find in our collection. So for links to the books that Amy talked about today, as well as a link to our catalog so you can explore on your own or contact one of our branches, visit claremontlibrary.org. And Amy, did you want to tell us a little bit about the educator collection? We always prepare teacher collections for teachers. But since so many parents are now helping their children and so many kids are learning from home, that we are expanding that to parents and caregivers and really anybody. And all they would have to do is go to our website and there's an educator collection button and there's a form that they can fill out and just tell us what kind of collection they need. And we are happy to pull books together, no matter the age, no matter the grade, no matter the subject, we will um, find stuff for you. Absolutely. All right. Thank you for sharing all of those incredibly interesting sounding books. Again, remember to visit the website, claremontlibrary.org, for links to those books, the education collection, and lots of other fun stuff in the show notes. Thank you to our viewers and our listeners. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, or Claremont Library, for more episodes of this podcast, plus other great library content. Subscribe to the Book Lovers Podcast, wherever you listen to your podcast. 